Okay, now we're going to introduce another general class of SMI implementation bugs, talk to attacks, time of check, time of use, and you can use the standard sort of defensive mechanisms. And also, as with most talk to attacks, there is a defensive mechanism having to deal with uh, not fetching data outside multiple times. So time of check, time of use vulnerabilities, they're a type of race condition because essentially you may check something and say, oh yeah, this looks good, but then some time passes and then later on you use it, but it could be changed by then. It could be changed either because the data location that you're checking is sort of naturally changing. There can be a race condition where an adversary changes it out from underneath you or for other reasons. So even though SMM is supposed to synchronize all the processor cores and it's only supposed to start running SMI handlers once everything is in SMM, that means, you know, theoretically there should be no attacker controlled code running out on, you know, any of the CPUs, right? And while that may be true, the thing is there are these peripheral processors which have the capability to do direct memory access. And so that means even if the attacker is not capable of running on any of the CPU cores, they could be running on a peripheral processor which could time a write to memory in such a way that SMM read some memory and then the DMA happened and changed the memory and then SMM reads the memory again and it's different the second time. Now these peripheral processors can't just directly DMA into the SMM range, into SMRAM, because uh, that's protected against DMA. So here's a vulnerability that the Intel researchers found in the open source UEFI uh, source code. And so it has to do with there's a data size that's added to a name size, you get an info size, and then if the info size is greater than some size, you'll continue and get a variable. And then later on, it comes down here and it once again it checks this data size from up here and it checks if it's greater than a var data size and if so, then it does a mem copy. Well, this uh, spatial separation here of the check up here proceeding down here and a use down here means that you could have a attacker come in and DMA and change the contents. So it's coming from a com buffer, which is outside of SMM. So this particular type of talk to is what's called a double fetch vulnerability because it's reading something outside of its control and then it's reading it again later on. So dealing with double fetches, the standard mitigation is to basically not double fetch, just fetch once. So get a copy, pull it into SMM and use only that copy in SMM so that it is subsequently not vulnerable to manipulation by a DMA attacker outside of SMM. So those were the talk to vulnerabilities. Standard defensive mechanisms would apply if the attacker, you know, breaks into SMM, you want them to be as restricted as possible. And the defense again is to not double fetch in this case. And of course there can be other vulnerabilities just generically. So this is the end of our uh, threat tree for now. This is uh, just other vulnerabilities as a general catch-all. There are other types of vulnerabilities and you have to read the fun research in order to go find them. So with that, we have covered all of the attacks that we're gonna cover in this class, and it looks like we just have sleep vulnerabilities left.